Nolan, do you consent to be recorded on this podcast? Yes, I give my consent. Kayla, do you consent to be recorded on this podcast? Yes, I give my consent. Welcome to Full Metal RPG. I'm your host. Uh, no, host. What? A, why am I? I'm still such bad habits. I'm Richie Buzzkill. I'm here with my good, good friends. We played Cyborg. I want to introduce you again because you, if you've been watched, following this last few episodes, you know these people. But if you haven't, I introduce Kayla, Dr. Balanceifer, who uh, got got uh, came out and played uh, cyborg with me how are you doing kella i'm doing great i will say i'm not a doctor oh you're not a doctor well no. you're a doctor in my heart uh, <laughs> every other doctor, certification you can trust me <laughs> yeah professional <laughs> professional balance <laughs> uh and noland welcome back noland to this show What's we're talking about a completely different game this time yeah yeah a lot more crunchy this time. A lot more fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, we, I ran uh, last weekend and I was, this was supposed to be right afterwards, but we all were tired. And then apparently people's mothers needed a holiday. Uh, <laughs> go mothers. Anyway, uh, so we, uh, we did this last weekend and uh, played. I ran a short session of Cyborg, uh, which, if you don't know, is the cyberpunk version of Morkborg. Morkborg? Uh, Morkborg? Morkborg? Is it many different pronunciations, but Cyborg, I know how to pronounce that. And don't you ever tell me I don't. <laughs> tell me in the comments. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so the basic idea is it's a doom metal of a cyberpunk game uh, based on the doom metal fantasy game, Morkborg. Uh, the, the, the basic idea is there is, uh, you roll a d20, you add your stat, and you try to get over a difficulty that the game master has set. Like this is very, very much, but it's way turned up the difficulty compared to your normal F20 game so um yeah i i think that's a good synopsis of of kind of the basic system i think the real difference between morborg and uh cyborg is there's more tactical options but i want to kind of hear before we get into kind of tap tactical options and and the kind of game in general i want to kind of hear what everybody thought of the the session in general the the kind of feel of cyborg as it were so uh, i'll jump in first i guess yes that's okay mm -hmm. yeah uh i very much enjoyed uh the short session it was short you know we built our characters uh which i'll have more to say about that later um uh, and once we got our characters built you know we had a little setup, a little, you know, arranging for a job. And uh, then we went out and went down, blow this, you know, broke through a cop police line and got down, you know, inside this building and had a little firefight. Uh, that was about it, right? We didn't have big session. It was good. Like we, uh, we got everything we needed to done. Uh, but yeah, for a taster of the system, it was good. We, uh, played out a lot of the different rules you know the tables like Morkborg uh give a lot of flavor you know all the random tables about what your character can be and how they got infected with nano machines and how they you know what happened with their weird drugs and like all the <laughs> other like all that stuff gives good good flavor uh to the game you know just like you remember from Morkborg so yeah I uh I enjoyed it very much and I thought it uh it does very much try to uh, evoke an even grittier cyberpunk than kind of your typical cyberpunk. Like it's, it's even more doomed 
than uh, regular cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kayla, you got another dog in character creation. <laughs> I did. It was so random enough. Um, the very first time that I played Morph Borg was like, just a couple of weeks ago and then we ran cyborg um obviously just like a few weeks afterwards and in both i got to have a dog one was an actual dog and then in this one i just happened to roll for an ai dog that uh boots and boots was less effective than king bitey was in our morg borg <laughs> <laughs> all hail king bitey uh <laughs> Well, did did you enjoy like did you enjoy Cyborg as much as as Morkborg? I mean, I, I don't know where where you're. I know you play a lot more fantasy because you know that's just easier to get a hold of. But do you, did you enjoy one over the other, or were you? I know we had a little more time with uh, playing Morkborg than because it was in per and also it's in person <laughs> yeah i think that i liked um cyborg just a little bit more but i think that was because i had a lot of fun rolling up the character so like it was really interesting i had no idea what the hell i was doing at first which thank you for walking me through some of that but um it was a lot of fun just rolling and getting random things like down to the class of the character that you're playing um it was just like okay i'm doing this now and it was a fun way to learn you know it was a fun way to like get all of the equipment uh build the backstory which is just built into the system yeah and this is probably the main difference i think and and it sort of was a road bump but it was also fun to really dig into the background is when we we did character creation because there is no scum birther for cyborg which is scum birther is like a website that just creates characters for you you we had to dig through the art book that is cyborg in a pdf form because there are no hard copies of this game no matter how many times i tried to print it my printer kept rejecting printing this thing in many different and interesting ways i almost feel like there is some sort of copyright protection in this book that is other than the, the gallons of ink you need to actually print it <laughs> yeah Go ahead. No, no, yeah, I have things to say about this. Yeah, I missed Scum Birther uh, pretty bad, right? <laughs> like, it took us a surprisingly long time to get characters uh, together. And even I've, we were, we were hard, we were rolling everything. I, I mean, I yeah. allowed people to choose, but, but I think everybody, everybody chose to everything. roll everything, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I definitely missed uh, Scum Birther, particularly because I rolled up my. Uh, <laughs> my first character with an amazing one hit point at hey. which point rbk was like you might want to roll up another one <laughs> so, which was a good good call um but yeah. i didn't end up needing it weirdly enough but uh, yes because i i wasn't really pushing super hard like everybody i, I hope everybody felt in danger in those set in that session because yeah, that's sure. the important part but like also i was not like rolling real hard on people like it was really only one combat it could have been three combats but i allowed people to talk their way out of these two other combats sure but you know my thing there was uh yeah like when you write an rpg book you're like serving many masters right it's got to be a technical manual that like teaches you how to play the game it's got to be like a novel or a gazetteer you know about the world you're in you know it's got to be a persuasive document that gets you like hyped to play the game and in the case of you know Mork Morgan and several other games it's also got to be like an art object and uh Mork Morgan Cyborg and yeah, both uh it's got to be an art object too and so it's like you're serving many masters and it's really hard to like write an RPG book that does all those things and uh having to filter through the art book to find the right tables and so forth to roll up my characters was a little frustrating at, at various points because like it wasn't as much of a technical manual right they had made some kind of trade-off there and you know if I'd had scum birther I'd have been like boom boom characters <laughs> done but we're you know yeah we spent about I think it was about an hour 
plus because we had some drop-ins relatively late but it right. still took us about an hour to roll characters which to me is it it did feel like oh, i was like oh god all right i i love this i love these tables i love reading these tables but when it comes to using them on the, uh, it's like where is this on this page i'm like i had two copies open i had two pdfs open and then i had the zoom window and everything else open just trying to like help people like oh that's on this page you know it, yeah it it really was a little bit cumbersome to try yeah to it was difficult for the first one uh just kind of like because it's not always clear like what's on what page you know uh because it's you know the pages are laid out as art objects not as you know like clear move from this table to this table to this table you know uh but yeah i will say the the learning curve was pretty quick, at least for me. Like the time it took me to roll up my second character was a quarter or a half of you know, less than half uh, than the time it took me to roll up my first one because I had found where stuff was. But if you're going through this PDF for the first time, you may find rolling up your first character is like a little confusing. You'll yeah, I think I think after I had the. Um... <clears throat> the page numbers because I was like quickly taking cheat sheet notes of like oh this is on this page and this is on this page like after I had those numbers it was a lot easier but um yeah I agree it was uh kind of confusing as to where you were supposed to be in the character creation and this is coming from someone who like really enjoyed that aspect of like learning the game at least so yeah I mean it it is does really immerse you in your character because of all these like like didn't nolan didn't your character uh basically turn into a nanomancer because he he took some random drugs is that yeah they're, 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 they're... <laughs> <laughs> yes I, I got free drugs which were neither free nor drugs yes no yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's how i got became infected with nano machines yes and, and you were a hacker right kayla yeah i was a burned hacker right and you you never revealed to me what your do you remember what the secret that burned you out um i don't even know if i like set that up to be uh, quite honest i don't think that it had a thing to like set that up so well there, there was there was some deep secret question. there was some deep secret that supposed to like make you like wanted by all the other hackers or whatever oh but, um yeah so i think i wrote that somewhere but lord knows where it's at oh, that, that's fine that's fine yeah uh, <laughs> the character sheet is a whole new journey <laughs> like, <laughs> style and it took me there is um what is it glitches yeah it took me a good 15 minutes to figure out what that actually said at the bottom until you said the word glitches i was like i have no idea what this is <laughs> yeah that's a font choice issue yeah yeah well it's not even a font choice so much as like a compound letter choice that doesn't exactly i mean i think it looks cool but it's also like it's a little difficult to parse and that's one of the points that I think I would have loved when when this when Cyborg was being kickstarted. Before it got kickstarted, we had this conversation on the Discord. Where we're like, "Oh, we should try and push them to get put out like a, a text version of this mm -hmm. for those people that have uh, uh, vision accessibility issues, yeah. text accessibility and vision issues. That something that's colorblind people would it would just it wreck color uh, like colorblind uh tests like it looks like one sometimes like um yeah my rene my second character was a renegade cyber slasher and i couldn't even read the name you know it's in it's in tag you know spray paint tag style and i couldn't even like read the, well the some of the letters of the class are, i had to google for what is this some of the some of the letters are kind of cut off at the edge of the page too yeah, yeah there's a lot but uh, i mean all in all i i think the book does function but i just don't think yeah. it functions well if you're trying to quickly create a character like if you're just right. sitting down like oh i'm gonna make a character and you're just like lazing through it and you don't have other people staring at you like right yeah you got like five people <laughs> trying to make characters all at once and and rbk is trying to like be traffic control and <laughs> whatever there's it's a lot of pressure everybody's learning it for the first time yeah 
I think you're right. I think if it if I were making a character, you know, at home, you know, by the fire drinking port or whatever. <laughs> like, Funny enough, I think it works better. It would work better as a book and not as a PDF. Like PDFs yeah, are, true. I mean, that's a whole nother show, but like a PDF is never fast enough, nor is it flippable enough. And then you got on top of that, the page numbers are like kind of in random places on the edges. And I gave you guys the spreads version which is two pages as one page, because I felt that that was a better version of the of it because realistically, you're going to be looking at both sides of the page. And I almost feel like this would be better as a, 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 a pork a landscape style book where these were each one of these spreads was one page because there's a lot of information that does it does avoid the middle seam like that but i think it just works better as a single page document <laughs> so yeah uh, i don't think we need to dwell on the layout and those things but yes. like it is you know it can be a challenge but it's yeah. not it doesn't stop you from playing the game it's perfectly no. reasonable and it, it's obviously that they made a trade-off there of art and beauty and you know the style they're trying to get across you know help half of cyberpunk is like style over substance right right so and, maybe and, <laughs> I and be I, complaining. for this uh for this session i did i used their random uh event uh, random uh heist or whatever thing in the back of the book and then i kind of modified it a little bit after you guys rolled your debts so like who was who who owed what? So like two characters owed money to uh, some gang member. And it, I was like, well, clearly that's a protagonist. That's, that's an antagonist of, of the story of two people. Uh, I mean, like, I love the hooks that the debt gives. Like I would have loved to get into your debt to the AI, Kayla and uh, Nolan's uh, I can I cannot remember what your character is. Uh, my uh, cousin or whatever was in the mayor's office and right that yeah. that would do a whole nother dimension you don't normally see. Like it implies that there's actually a government, which is something you don't see in cyberpunk very often. That you it implies that there's actually a governmental overstructure that is completely ineffectual and totally enslaved to the corporations. But like. It, it did imply that. So it would have been interesting to kind of like get into that a little bit, but that's, that's my government nerd speaking. Like, you know. Is, is the government for that the UCS? Is that like one of the government boards? Probably, board? probably, but I don't, <laughs> I don't because remember. Because funny enough, I found my terrible truth. Oh yeah. That, that was the public faces of the UCS board are fabricated. They don't exist. Who's running the UCS? Oh, that would have been perfect. I would uh, that would have that would have dovetailed as soon as I knew that, and we didn't get around to I even knowing that as the game master, but I would have totally stacked that on top of Nolan's cousin is maybe actually he's the maybe actually the one running the government. Maybe. Like <laughs> the the AI has has eliminated all the government except for one person that is the actual only person they actually need to run, and they have like you know implanted in them it has a piece of the ai that keeps track of them you know the, that sort of thing the government's just deep faked the right. whole government <laughs> deep fake government <laughs> see that's literally the best cyberpunk is just like just use it because we live in a cyberpunk hellscape let's be honest here like let let's let's look at like all of the ai and bitcoin and all this other other stuff like no no this is we're living in cyberpunk like so it's really difficult to push that used to be when you push reality to cyberpunk it was like oh yeah but now it's like how do you push even further so like the you know in in uh cyborg you're supposed you all have these implanted chips that let you see ar objects and communicate and basically your cell phone is implanted in you and and like it's something I didn't quite of put I've only pushed a little bit but like the the sky is supposed to be covered in advertising like you, you can't look in anywhere that is not covered in some sort of advertising or whatever. And that's what I would have probably pushed more into is like having different advertising, like reoccurring 
but i had like the gang was uh was the uh a, a punk catholics essentially they were they were <laughs> <laughs> the the you know they had the little collars and the they had mohawks and they like the you know, nun habits, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah the nun habits and they they rolled up and they were like you have sinned against us and like tried to like and 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 they left graffiti that was all like upside down crosses on top of like uh woodfin's car because that was that was the that was the party's mobile was he got a car in character creation so everybody piled into his car to to like go from place to place and they had a lovely car chase and um <laughs> oh yeah but uh yeah i mean i feel like it does the thing right it does a cyberpunk <laughs> it gives you that feeling of the dystopia it, uh, it, in particular there's a rule about that Yes, my favorite uh, rule. On that, yeah, which no, is can... pl please state your favorite rule, Nolan. <laughs> yeah, the in the very beginning there it says uh, you can ignore any rule in this book except this one. Like the PCs are not like friends with the corporations. They are not <laughs> fuzzy, you know, friendly things. Like you are, they are crushing you with debt and uh, and problems, and you you have to fight. Like they are not. You're not going to become friendly corporate raiders you know shills like you might yeah. work for one but really you're being forced into it right yeah. that's rule zero um I, I it has lots of great lines in it like we should have burned this city centuries ago is one of my favorite lines that that's not quite on the akin uh, to william gibson the the uh the sky was the color of a, a tv turned to a dead channel which doesn't it has doesn't work the way it used to but still fun anyways um yeah but there's plenty of lines in that playing as you read through it it really does evoke with very few words the kind of feeling of this place and yeah i hope and that that helped get everybody you know on in board plus my lighting as it is right now was on point <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I love the tables and everything and so few words it did very much capture the very, you know, cyberpunk ethos, you know. Uh, cyberpunk is probably, you know, I'm probably the third in our group in terms of liking cyberpunk because I come at it from, you know, loving noir, uh, which means I just end up loving a lot of cyberpunk <laughs> kind of things. Because, uh, yeah, the, there's a big overlap there. Uh, but yeah, it very much evoked the uh, the whole cyberpunk feel, and it wasn't, you know, it's not got the word punk in there as a cutesy like, oh, this is what a genre is. You append punk to it. It's no, no, no. <laughs> like you have to like fight the power. Like that's part of the rules. Yeah, we could we could talk about our punk 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 RPG. <laughs> that's a shout out to the Discord. Because <laughs> that's a conversation we always have. Whenever some some new punk thing gets kickstarted, invariably someone will link it, and then we'll have the punk conversation again. Yeah, but that was very nice, Ka Kayla. Did you? I mean, you have you got to play uh, any of uh, like? Did you play in like any of the old cyberpunk games, or have you got to uh, immerse yourself in any of this kind of genre before? Um, no, the probably the closest that I've come to this genre is when we played Headspace. Um, <laughs> a perfect introduction to cyberpunk. <laughs> so yeah, that uh, I that's why I love gaming with you guys because I get to try out new stuff all the time. Uh, yeah, it, it was really, um, uh, I think, I think it was a pretty good, I mean. It did the thing. It got gave enough. Everything was just one step ahead, like, and it's set in twenty twenty x three was the 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 year it was stated. So it's always like whatever. Uh, a much better way of uh, <laughs> dealing with time is just like, yeah, it happens sometime in the future, right? And it had just enough technology that we don't have already that we know about that and and just like amped everything up 
to give it that feel. Um, I really do think that they they did a good job. It's just, man, <laughs> I love art, but I would have liked a little less art, maybe. I've decided that that's... the true thing, like the reason that we're all missing this is because we all don't use drugs. And so like, <laughs> we just need to use drugs and the artwork would make sense and we could read it perfectly and it would be great. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like you, we would have all gotten distracted by a page or something eventually, but like, uh, yeah. And, and there was some really, you know, uh, speaking of drugs, there was some cool, it, it, it had the prerequisite for cyberpunk. It had drugs you've never heard of that are interesting, like, uh, you know, blackout. Yeah, half of them look like things you want to dose somebody else with and half of them look like things you want to take yourself. <laughs> right. But it never really got into like, like how if how addiction would work, or I think that was all kind of left intentionally blank so that you, uh, so the game master could uh, could deal with that as whatever like because there are clearly drugs that are like uh, adrenochrome HST, which is healed a D six at hit points. Like that's something I. A whole party is going to get addicted to that. A whole party is going to get addicted to that if they can get a hold of it, right? <laughs> oh, and then that begs the question: like, well, do people like then start intentionally hurting themselves so that they can use the drug more and like get the fix? Yeah, and then you, you know you have the the drug spiral kind of like I mean it doesn't tell it doesn't give you any rules for that, but it does give you some very tempting drugs that you can go there if you want to, right? It doesn't, it, it avoids the problem, you know, with, uh, uh, it does avoid the problem a lot of modern games and cyberpunk games have where they start describing mental uh, illnesses. Mm. They just kind of like describe things and you can do with them what you want, right? Because that, a lot of these, uh, you know, merits and flaws and other systems that just it's like whoa holy crap like this does not age well <laughs> right yeah where this i think does a pretty good job of dealing with that so gives you some build your own vice situation right yeah and you and you can you know you can introduce them or not you know use them at, at <laughs> use them as you wish so um uh, yeah um it was funny because like I, as I was preparing, I was I thought I was going to run this in person, so I thought I was going to have a, a game master screen. So I made I went through all, I read through the whole book and I and I looked at the sheets at the end and there was like it was missing a few things. So I made a sheet and I get I gave the gave the patrons uh, of like it had all the drugs on because that's the thing I was missing. It was like there was no table of weapons. So like when I was, if I was dealing with a, had a bad guy and like it said it had, a, they had a nail gun, like what damage does a nail gun do? Like, yes, I could just have like pulled that out and oh, it's a D6, right? But like I would, so I made a list of that kind of the stuff that was missing. So I had a whole page of extra uh, boosts and, and there like I said, there's some different, some more uh, combat options that make it feel more modern than uh, like you could have cover or aiming or ranges or hits always hurt, which means that even if you, your armor would soak it, you're still going to take a damage, right? Which I would have, if we were playing in a longer game, I totally would have implemented or suppressive fire or some of these other things, morale and rest time and impressions and but I think the system works. I think I might be running it wrong, though. <laughs> I don't know. The system worked. I mean, you could have you could have killed us faster, like surely, like. But right. But like my, I think what I'm missing is I'm actually. This is me thinking. Oh well, why would I, as a game master, want to roll dice, right? because I want you guys to roll, do all the rolling dice. And mm -hmm. I could have had that anyways. Is I was like, I made, had the realization, I was like, why are we rolling initiative? Why, why are we rolling initiative? It was like, 
because there is supposed to be a whole round of the uh, of the baddies uh, attacking. And all I've ever been doing in all the games I've ever run of the system is just when the players fail a roll to hit something, then they roll defense. And mm. then that's when the bad guys can attack. And I think it's still brutal that way, but I can't, I can definitely see it being way more brutal if, uh, yeah. If, yeah, if it's if that it plus they get their own round. Yeah. That'll, yeah. That'll but definitely they, do it for you. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, you, you guys thought the, the combat was pretty quick, right? It didn't, didn't really, bo- I mean, that's can be really a big deal, uh, in a lot of these games as it kind of bogs down in combat but i think it worked pretty well yeah it did not bog down it uh it kept moving uh you know uh, at a certain point we just went with kind of popcorn initiative like who goes next you know kind of thing because we got tired of rolling initiative or whatever uh but yeah it kept moving and uh, uh yeah i got yeah, a lucky my- and got a lucky hit with a grenade and didn't and we dug, dove for cover and didn't didn't die. It was great. D- didn't kill everyone else either. I Crazy. didn't even kill anyone else. Yeah, no, I my takeaway from that was like that we didn't have a lot of combat and I was totally fine with that. Yeah, I, I think I could have pushed it more, right? Because you can always push it more, but like I felt like for a short session it was just a generated task like and i wanted just kind of like to do the thing i i didn't really care about the trying to really test the system because i knew as soon as we were in one combat that we could test i mean like there was like i had to make a call when uh the grenade missed right this is a very osr thing right the grenade misses well shoot what happens when the gray misses? Well, clearly it bounces somewhere. <laughs> so it bounces in this direction. I had I had the player roll and it bounced back at them, but it didn't it, it hit the it hit the cover they were behind. Like that's the other thing is like when you have players that are have played these kind of games or anything like this kind of game they're going to know to use cover and not just stand up like idiots. <laughs> like if you've only played fantasy games, uh, there, there is a, there's a tactical disadvantage to fantasy games in the fact that you never take cover in fantasy. Like that's just not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's rare. Yeah. But yeah, um, I remember cyberpunk 2020 back in the nineties when 2020 seemed like a long time. Away. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. The future yeah. past, the future past. <laughs> <laughs> exactly but yeah it was all about cover yep um unless you're in the fantasy game as a rogue half lane and then you're like i'm standing behind you so i am clearly in cover already <laughs> how right. did this happen <laughs> yeah i mean that's yes a clever rogue will absolutely go to cover right but it's not necessarily a thing that's in a lot of those games but it, it does uh, give you um, kind of like, I, I did, I did you know, I, I drew a box on the, we used Roll20 and I had to quickly relearn how to do Roll20 and give everybody tokens because I was like, oh, I'm just going to show them the room and then we're going to, and it's like, no, you need, you need slightly more than that. So we needed so I, I pulled out some of the free army men from the from the packs or whatever that they just automatically give you and I'm like okay and and I, I just made a token out of the image out of the book um because I, I think that's the best way to make a lot of stuff it that that would be a big advantage if I was play if I was running this on roll 20 every week is I just go take the image whatever like even if it's just the image of the there's there's like the soldier actually uh baddie has like a bullet going through his head like i would just make that the image for the token on these kind of uh systems yeah. like, those little simplified icons that you stole from books those worked great like yeah i mean and realistically you could play the whole thing theater of the mind uh 
but you know since you got roll 20 you know i wouldn't go making elaborate you know layouts for corporate buildings or whatever you know no, no but no. uh just having some tokens to be like well this guy is to the left of this guy you know i i think in a fantasy game i can definitely get away with like easily roll theater of the mind but there's sometimes when it's when grenades are getting flung around <laughs> and someone rolls a one right kind of need to know where everyone is at at this right. very instant unless i'm gonna just roll a die and go you're it nolan you get a grenade in your lap what do you do right. <laughs> um but yeah i i i think i think that's a that's to me that's kind of um kind of sums up what we, what we were doing uh, and i'm i definitely um well anyway does does anybody else have anything else they really want to burningly talk about because i'm going to just ask whether we play or roll, run this again next but uh i think that covers everything i had kill um it was really easy for like someone who is not like necessarily familiar with the genre to get into so um i think that that's a plus that it has going for it obviously having a single page for a character sheet has its benefits in that it's not terribly hard to navigate around and you can kind of like walk a new person through it which is all things that i look for in a role-playing game because i have people who aren't necessarily familiar especially with like not D D. So that's helpful for me. Right. And, and I think that, that they did a, a, a good job for that. And I think once the, the scum birther comes around, like I know that it was a lot of fun to roll through the characters and if you were doing it by yourself, but once scum birther comes around, like just handing somebody a character sheet with all that flavor off those tables, because those tables are just dripping with flavor. Like you could... I mean, you could run any kind of cyberpunk adventures or modules you have laying around with this. Like, there's almost nothing in here that, I mean, you just do sub substitution quick on the on the fly stuff. But like, there is even like full cyborg conversions if you really want to just stomp on people. Like, they they're there. It's all there. Uh, but yeah, I I I think I think it's it's easy to get people into. It's easier when once the random generator comes around, I would definitely run this again. I don't know if this is going to be my default cyberpunk game, but it's pretty close to what I wanted when I was reading. I mean, this is way easier and way less than cyberpunk red, but this is way easier to, I could just, oh yeah, we're going to play this tonight. Like, okay. And there's my adventure and go <laughs> so uh nolan would you uh would you play and or i, I don't think this is one you would run I, this doesn't sound like a might run. but yeah i tend to run weirder indie art things <laughs> like utter nonsense uh but like this is not out of the realm of something i would run um what i would say is i would run or play it if you want something like i said even darker than like cp 2020 or silverpunk red or whatever those are very much games where it's like yeah you're selling out your soul to the corporations and like things are you know you either have to sell out or you have to you know be forever doomed to be a punk on the street and you know there's that has a very dark perspective this has an even darker perspective than like the world is ending like <laughs> you know well th that's actually something i didn't talk about is it has sort of the same like uh, uh morkborg yeah. has the the prophecies and you you mm -hmm. roll you're supposed to roll at the beginning of every session you're supposed to roll on the pro to see if you get a one on a certain die type and the die type will determine how long the world will generally last and once you get to seven prophecies fulfilled the world ends right and and in uh, Cyborg, it has that same system, except the world reboots. Yeah, the world is a simulation in it. The world is a simulation and it reboots. And it says and play I, the campaign again. <laughs> right. I don't think I would force anybody to do that. 
but I would, when I got to that, I would be like, and it's actually happens more often in cyber cyborg because you're supposed to roll a die at every midnight in game. At least it says just says every midnight. So it could be every midnight you're playing or every midnight you're in game. Right. So like to me, it would be every midnight in game. And then I like the idea of it's sort of like uh, this meta thing where the players all remember what they've happened. And I will just, I would try to write down the description of the, the first descriptions I would as a game master. And as soon as I rolled that, I'd be like, the phone rings, you know, whatever, whatever the, the start of the campaign, I would just go right back to start. And then we discuss whether or not we want to go on or just like, deal, like, well, Hey, wait a minute. I, these guys were going to jump us. Let's jump those assholes. Like, and, and it would diverge very quickly, right? You wouldn't be playing sure. Groundhog's day. At least I hope not. But like, I, I kind of, think you could get away with at least a session or two of that kind of fun like the players the characters know that they're in groundhog's day right. <laughs> yeah i think it could be enjoyable for at least a reboot or so like at a certain point you know i think you as the gm would want to do something to like cue the characters into the fact that the world was rebooting so that they might you know try and do something about it or you might you know or maybe not right like well what i would say is almost if i almost would set up an npc to get killed in the first section mm -hmm. that they all like set up an npc that they like kill the npc and then when the sit gets rebooted it's like oh shit we can save tom oh shit like and that gets people engaged in that in that loop at least once right right yeah and then it could become the groundhog day thing is like oh tom died again but further on and then you can you know it, it you can you could push this you could push it but i don't necessarily think uh i don't i don't think i would do it forever like that's i do <laughs> i do like that it doesn't say to burn the book like it does in the in morkborg like after the world ends you're supposed to burn the book which I think is really fucking metal, but also kind of like I can't do it. But if if we had, <laughs> it's a bit if, much. <laughs> if we had gotten to the end of that in when we were playing the salt the the salt marsh uh, marshes game, uh, West Marches game we did last summer, we would have burned a book. We, it would have just been, because we're doing performative art. Like yes clearly we're going to burn a book right yeah, but that was that was my experience of morkborg was the the west margins morkborg with the discord and those guys then. yeah i i you know if if the patrons want to do something with this this summer like i'd be down uh if people are interested in that like we can we can organize around that idea but uh yeah so well that was uh that was the quick and the dead that was uh cyborg uh i think everybody everybody happy with where we're at uh yep if you want to uh play through an episode of black mirror just pick up cyborg <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is yeah very black mirror very like and there's lots of descriptions of things you could use uh as a as a black mirror episode for sure so well very cool uh uh, well, thank you, uh, Kayla and Nolan, for uh, joining me for this uh, kind of uh, debrief, late night uh, conversation, and uh, I really appreciate oh, yeah. you guys. Uh, for those wanting to uh, date this recording, uh, yeah, I should go out and see if the uh, moon is going into eclipse here in the D.C. area. Oh, well, very nice. <laughs> that sounds like fun. <laughs> Uh, I'll have to. It's about, it's about time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's around here. So, <laughs> to look it up. Anyway, uh, I will. I will, uh, Kayla. I will once again link to your fantastic work at uh, Saving Through. Damn it! All right. Anyway, <laughs> fantastic work, and uh, I think uh, that's all we got. Rah. <laughs>